Hey, Dr. Amy here, and in this video, I'm giving you an insider look into the Yuka app. The good, the bad, and the downright ugly. Some cancers rely on this app to guide their food choices. But here is the problem. This app can sometimes be helpful, but it can also lead you down a very dangerous path. I don't want you to fall victim to what so many other cancer survivors have struggled with long-term anxiety triggered by the Yuka app. But first, to really know what Yuka information is useful and what is actually really dangerous, you need to understand the basics of the Yuka app. Yuka allows you to scan food and cosmetic products to get a rating as to how safe it is out of 100. But this app, it's not designed for cancer survivors. It's designed for the average person to assess how healthy your food is. So with that said, if the Yucca app tells you to avoid a food, it could have absolutely nothing to do with your cancer risk. This is so important to keep in mind because we know that cancer survivors need targeted nutrition. You cannot continue to eat the same foods you did before cancer and expect to get a different health result. Your food fuels your recovery. But with this app, it's not even intended for cancer survivors. So keep that in mind. It's not really made for you. Now, Yuka does rate food based on what they call nutritional quality, which is how many additives it has and if it can be classified as organic or not. Now, whether these two things actually make an impact on your health or your cancer risk, well, more on that in just a little bit. The Yuka app says it takes nutritional quality as 60% of its score. The score is based on the NutriScore method, which gives it a rating from A, being a good rating, to E, being the absolute worst. And it gives you an associated color system. Red meaning stop, don't eat this food, and green means go. The Nutriscore system is loosely based off of the United Kingdom's Food Standard Agency. It's used mainly in European countries. Now, Yuka adds in its own qualifying system based on additives. This contributes to 30% of the score, and the last 10% is whether it's organic or not. Okay, so right off the bat, it does look like the Yuka app is trying to use about 60% of its score to align with best standard practice according to the UK Food Standards Agency. But the other 40% is just at their own discretion additives and organic score, which has never shown to have any evidence to increase your cancer risk. But to really show you how the Yuka app works and how it scores food, I wanna show you some examples. Let's start with something pretty basic, cottage cheese. Now when we scan cottage cheese, a rating of 45 out of 100 is given. It's rated as poor and it's given a yellow light. At first glance, this does not look very good. Basically, a failing grade. But why does Yucca give this rating? Let's look at why they decided to rate cottage cheese, a seemingly healthy food, with such a low rating. There are so many positives with cottage cheese, but the way that the Yucca app lays out its rating, it's almost impossible not to look at the negatives first. The red light, the big negative with cottage cheese, has to do with its additives. If we click into this, we actually get more information as to why Yucca rates it as so low. Yucca says that cottage cheese includes polysorbates as an emulsifier. They say that these types of polysorbates are actually known to cause autoimmune diseases and to disrupt the gut microflora. Okay, so important to note right off the bat that this has absolutely nothing to do with cancer, nothing at all. But the second thing to look at is, is this actually true? The good news is, is that Yuka actually gives you the exact science that they're using to back up their score. So let's look at that. Does it make sense? Is it true? If you wanna be really informed about your health and your cancer risk, then you've gotta look at this. This is where the wheels start falling off. For this claim, they actually offer three pieces of scientific literature. The first is a mouse study. They're looking at the gut bacteria in mice. Well, humans are actually very different than mice. So although this study might be interesting, it can't guide what we do in humans. We also need to consider the dose. If we give copious amounts of anything to mice, it's going to cause problems. If we're talking about foods or additives at a much higher dose than even a human can consume, then it's not really applicable or true. The second piece of literature they cite is actually a simulator model. Huh? Okay. So basically they've created a model to mimic the human 
digestive system. This model is intended to mimic the very complex human gut microbiome. Now we know that more and more literature is coming out about the human gut microbiome and its impact on health, but we actually don't have a very accurate simulator to test this accuracy on. It's just too complex. It doesn't capture the interactions between things like the gut and the immune system, for example. A simulator like this, again, interesting, but not very useful. It's really just a starting point in terms of research. We can't actually use this evidence to change our eating habits. And the last piece of science that they cite is again, a mouse study. Now, the interesting part is that we know that this is not sufficient evidence to guide how humans eat. But here is where the Yuka app really starts losing credibility for me. Yuka states that the European Food Safety Agency says that this additive does not raise safety concerns. But they go on to argue that Yuka takes into consideration the most recent animal studies. Even though we know that animal studies are not a good indicator for changing the habits of humans. The frustrating part is that we've completely skipped over the positive aspect of cottage cheese. Remember how Yuka did say there were a bunch of positive aspects? High in protein, definitely something that cancer survivors need. Low calorie, again, a great option for cancer survivors. We know that most cancer survivors gain weight during their treatment. So in order to get you to drop weight, to be a healthy body weight once again, we do need to control for calories. And it's also low in saturated fats, a known risk factor for cancer survivors, especially breast cancer survivors. We especially need to be mindful of heart health in breast cancer survivors because this is the number one cause of death among breast cancer survivors, not cancer itself. By lowering the amount of saturated fats in your diet, we're actually protecting your heart health as well. There is so much positive about this product, but Yuka deems it as something to avoid based on very weak evidence that's not supported by regulatory bodies and it has no impact on cancer survivors. It would be such a shame to see cancer survivors avoid this food based on this rating. You could be missing out on something that could really help you. Okay, so let's move on to the next food. And this one is a controversial one, especially for cancer survivors. So let's see how it stacks up. Canned tuna. When we look at canned tuna in the Yuka app, here's what comes up. It gives it a score of 78 out of 100 and gives it a green light. It lists the positives first and it only has one negative, that it's a little bit too salty. Okay, so that seems fair. So let's dive in a little bit further. There are no additives in this product, and that's true, although the relevance of that is a little uncertain. It's higher in protein, which is great for cancer survivors, it's lower in calories, and it's lower in saturated fats. Okay, so all in all, I would agree with this assessment. Canned tuna is a great option for cancer survivors, and the Yuka app agrees with that assessment. Okay, but since we know that higher amounts of protein are good for cancer survivors, then let's look at a protein bar. What does Yuka say about the typical protein bar? Let's give it a scan. Ooh, 27 out of 100. Ouch. Red light. Let's dive into why Yuka is beating up on this protein bar so badly. Yuka lists this product as being too caloric. This statement is an issue and we need to dive into why because this could cause serious harm to cancer survivors. To say something is too caloric without taking into consideration their individual nutrition needs, that is irresponsible. In the Cancer Freedom Program, every single woman that I work with gets an individualized nutritional assessment specific to your body, your treatment, your diagnosis, your goals. To limit somebody's calories just because, that makes no sense. This app is actually treating every single person the same. Regardless if you had cancer or if you didn't, if you're male or female, or anything else about your body or your life. This is mind-blowing to think that every single person should receive the exact same nutritional advice. Each cancer survivor needs specific nutritional targets that are individualized to their needs, and this type of protein bar could be perfectly suited for that. This might be a great option for you. Okay, so beside the calories, what else does Yuka point out? They say that sucralose is a hazardous additive. And when we look at the references they cite, they specifically cite the Nutrinet Santé study. 
Now, the Nutrinet Santé study is a very large piece of literature that looks at artificial sweeteners and cancer risk. But Yucca's conclusion of this study is not accurate. When you look at the Nutrinet Santé study and control for different body weights, we see that the cancer risk associated with sucralose, it disappears. This is actually extremely important to control for someone's body weight because it's known that having a higher body weight, being overweight or obese, that actually increases your risk of cancer or cancer recurrence. The overwhelming majority of experts on this topic agree that there's no risk for sucralose increasing cancer. It's like they have been very selective about what aspects of literature they want to include in this app. Okay, so what else can you take away from the Yuka app? What do you need to know overall? Yuka paints nutritional information as black and white. And in reality, nutrition is far more complex than just good or bad. Your nutritional needs need to be tailored and customized to you as a cancer survivor. There's a real possibility that yucca will discourage you from eating foods that are really helpful for cancer survivors. But here is the scariest thing about yucca. It's actively making a choice on how to present food information to you. Instead of empowering cancer survivors so they feel confident about what they're eating after cancer, yucca is actually triggering food fear and anxiety. This is scary because we know that there is a wealth of literature that clearly shows if you push food rules on cancer survivors, there are negative consequences. Many cancer survivors can develop an obsession around the food that they eat. Even if you've never previously had an eating disorder, you can start becoming obsessive about healthy eating and really start to take on some negative eating behaviors. This can really negatively impact a cancer survivor's life and has absolutely no positive effects on reducing your risk of cancer. It does appear that Yuka has strong opinions about what additives should and should not be included without backing it up with any real evidence. It really lacks the ability to correctly educate cancer survivors on how to nourish their bodies after cancer. That's exactly why I'm linking up this next video here on the best foods to eat after cancer. Click the link here, I'll see you in the next video.